Today's episode of the Bitcoin Show is brought to you by Mt. Gox, mtgox.com, and BitPay, bit-pay.com, and Mezzy Grill, M-E-Z-E Grill.com, and Bitbrew.net. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bitcoin Show. Today, I have a special surprise for you. I've been a little uh, incommunicado lately, and that's because of this surprise. On the heels of the world's first Bitcoin conference and World Expo, NYC, as you all know, it was an amazing, amazing time. We got to spend time with all the greatest Bitcoin minds, developers, uh, people involved in Bitcoin at every level, from every walk of life, converged on New York City from all the continents of the planet. It was amazing, amazing energy. As you ask anyone who was there, it was uh, just unbelievable. It was the most exciting conference I'd ever been to, and a lot of people said the same thing. Really, really exciting. Well, I decided to get on a plane and come to Tokyo. Why Tokyo? That's where I'm at, actually. Tokyo, Japan, right now. The reason is we want to um, uh, shoot all week here in Tokyo, uh, live on location, and we are uh, going to experience Mount Gox. We're going to take you to Mount Gox headquarters. Uh, it's up on a mountain called Gox. It's amazing. I'm going to show you everything later. And uh, anyway, we're going to tour Mount Gox uh, corporate offices, their headquarters here in Tokyo, and um, Roger Vera Memory Dealers. Memory MemoryDealers.com, which is one of the, I, I've given him a nickname, uh, Bitcoin Jesus. You'll see more about that. Memory Dealers is like one of the largest retail, uh, retailers who accepts Bitcoin and promotes Bitcoin. He's a Bitcoin evangelist extraordinaire. We love Roger. And um, also, we're going to do all kinds of uh, interesting things this week in Tokyo. We've got an appointment this evening at Tokyo time with Hackerspace. Uh, guys, the, the, the geeks from meetup.com at Hackerspace, and we're going to introduce them. We're going to do a little talk about Bitcoin and, and uh, explain to them, and also get some feedback about what's happening uh, here in the local community. And we've also met, met, already met, some members of the local Bitcoin community and had some talks. So we've, we're getting all that on tape, and we're going to piece it together into uh, episodes. Really good, uh, good stuff about what's happening in Japan and in Asia. Uh, in the world of Bitcoin. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, we're going to go to a uh, Kabakuka, Kabaku, Kabakuba. I think it said. Anyway, it's a Japanese nightclub. <laughs> I'm not saying it right, for sure, but it's a Japanese nightclub, okay? And it's really, really popular venue in the evening in Japanese culture. Um, and we have uh, spoken to the owner of one, and he is willing to accept Bitcoin. So we are going to actually uh, shoot the whole thing. In of us setting him up to accept Bitcoin. We might even meet meet one or two of the young ladies that work there. Exciting. So stay tuned for that uh, this week. And also, um, you know, the uh, as you may know, a hurricane and an earthquake uh, New York City where we live, and uh, all in one week, and it was just the craziest thing. Um, the hurricane actually, I'm sorry, the earthquake actually happened while I was on the jet. We, the jet was, you know, had already taxied to the runway, and jet and there's shock absorbers and all that, and I, it was a very minor tremor. Apparently, is what it. I mean, it it felt like on the plane. I didn't even notice. I was probably moving around, but um, as a result, we had to taxi back to the gate and stay on the plane and for an hour and a half and all that jazz. As you may know, they shut down all the airports, and uh, it was a little bit, you know, disconcerting. But, um, you know, they evacuated all the federal buildings, blah, blah, blah. I got a hold of that and everybody, and everybody's fine, and everybody at the studio was fine. I was like, okay, fine. What a relief. An hour and a half later, we took off, and we ended up in, um, you know, flying to Tokyo. And then a hurricane's coming. What? A hurricane is coming to New York City. So, uh, obviously, this is really weird stuff. And um, uh, everybody took the preparations and uh, went to higher ground and mandatory evacuations for a hurricane in, in New York. I mean, that's what you expect in Miami is the weirdest thing. So anyway, thank God, you know, everybody I know, as far as I know, is fine and safe and sound. And we didn't even have any flooding or anything. Um, so thank goodness for that. 
Um, I mean, not in our building. I mean, where we are, all of our locations. Uh, and there was a lot of flooding, but not where we were. So uh, we, you know, prayers and hearts go out to um, those who have been affected by that, of course. Um, meanwhile, now I'm in Tokyo, and um, somebody needs to uh, uh, needed to remind me <laughs> when you're going to Tokyo, bring shorts and not wool jackets because it's tropical here. It's like sunny and tropical and beautiful, gorgeous. Uh, uh, and however, now my flight is scheduled for Thursday to go back because it was delayed. I mean, it's automatically canceled due to the uh, the weather, but um, in New York, so my flights were canceled because of the weather in New York. Meanwhile, um, the uh, flight for Thursday going back is actually. Um, uh, uh, I think it might be changed because there's a hurricane headed, headed to Japan right now. So as we speak, there's a hurricane that's headed to Japan, and it's going to be here on Thursday, on uh, uh, the same day I'm flying back. So hold on a second. Let me just change this um, Skype status. The uh, Okay. There. All right, cool. So <clears throat> children playing on Skype, you know. That's to be expected. So, um, let's see, what else? So that's what's happening. Um, let, me, uh, let me show you a little bit. I want to give you a little bit of a tour of what's happening here. This is uh, the skyline. If you can see it okay. Let's see here. Uh, let me get out of the frame here so you can see. But this is, I'll get on this side. All right. So this is like, this is the view from... Uh, from where I'm at at the moment, and that's the skyline of Tokyo. Look at that. It's like an Asian New York, except, I don't know, people say New York City is a sleepy town compared to Tokyo. It is a hustle-bustle place, but as, as much of, it, of a uh, hustle-bustle place as it is, it's a very, very exciting. Um, it actually is so clean and organized. The people are so polite, and uh, it's unbelievably clean and well organized it's amazing but I'm just giving you a little bit of a panorama of the skyline that I can see from from here now the um, later uh, later today I'm gonna be going over there Do you see that building in the back they see the tall white building and then right there in the center you see the, the tallest tallest uh, sort of dark gray. It's kind of like a slate-colored building, the tallest one. Well, that's the hotel where I'm staying. It's called Cerulean Tower. It's actually not a hotel, not only a hotel. It's uh, like one of the most prestigious office buildings in Tokyo. It's called Cerulean Tower, and uh, that's where I'm staying. And it also happens to be the headquarters of Mount Gox. You may have heard of Mount Gox. <laughs> that's it. So later today, I'm going to take a uh, camera crew over there, and we're going to show you what it looks like, the entrance and uh, the whole uh, scene of uh, entering the Mt. Gox offices. We're going to tour the Mt. Gox offices, and we are going to meet a lot of the staff that, that are over there working. They're busy working right now because, uh, you know, it's midday here. And... Uh, uh, very, very exciting. You'll get to see them in a way you've never seen them before. Of course, we're always bringing you things you've, uh, you've never seen in the way you've seen them before. So, uh, um, anyway, really exciting things. I've already been over there and I've seen what they're doing and it's just really, really cool. You're going to love it. We're going to show you all kinds of fun, groovy new things um, in Mt. Gox's offices. Um, and what else? What else? Um, the... Uh, 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 what else? What else? Oh, I wanted to announce that um, there are um, we we came up with while I was here the other night we were talking at dinner. I was talking with Roger Ver of MemoryDealers.com and uh, some members of the local Bitcoin community. We all went out to this amazing tofu restaurant. It's like famous where they make tofu at the table. Really, really cool. Um, and we didn't shoot the video for that because it was an intimate, you know dinner thing. But one of the ideas that we had come up with, we kind of all formulated this idea together. And that is that um, Bitcoin really needs to be associated with uh, one of its most important uses, which it really is. Not only micro, micro, you know, micro payments and zero uh, processing fees and the fact that there's no chargebacks and all those benefits, 
Um, it can be used for so many things, like monetizing web content. But one of the major, major benefits of Bitcoin is its ability to be used for charity, for good. And that's really, really important to me and to, to everybody, really. Um, the, it's really exciting that you, we can uh, associate Bitcoin with charity. Because when, uh, for example, there's a charity called epicchange.org. Um, there's a, a young lady who uh, started this organization. Um, it was a, the whole story I'll tell later on other episodes. But the basic idea is, uh, in this little village in Tanzania, there are many, many orphans due to the AIDS epidemic there, and these orphans are cared for only for food and shelter, but they don't get any education at all. So a local woman there. Uh, who sells chickens actually saved up her pennies and rented a little tiny shack and basically made a school. And this woman from Florida, uh, Stacy Monk, was so moved by what she saw there, she went back to the United States and started a, an organization called EpicChange.org. And the rest is history. They are uh, th this school has become a really large school, uh, helping many, many children, um, getting the best education in the country there. And um, we've actually, Ed and I have actually met some of the kids on Skype. It's so cool. See this little, this little 10 year old who's on Skype, he's telling us that he's going to be um, an astronaut for NASA. And, you know, the thing that really is remarkable about it is that he probably will be. You know, he will be able to do that. He's going to have opportunities that he would never have had before because of what um, Epic Change is doing. Well, I introduced Epic Change to Bitcoin a while back, and they have been accepting Bitcoin as donations ever since. So uh, we're going to be, the idea is we're going to be featuring a lot of these charities that are agreeing to accept Bitcoin and show how Bitcoin is changing the lives of people all over the world um, in, in so many different ways including um, the amazing, amazing, important work that these charities are doing. So that's very, very exciting. And uh, we have, um, let's see, what else? We decided to uh, specifically target the most popular charities in the world, the least controversial, most popular charities that have the most members, charities like United Way and so on, um, that actually are the largest, and start accepting donations for those charities in the form of Bitcoin immediately. And we can do it immediately without even asking anyone. Um, we've already published a uh, Bitcoin address where I can hold those Bitcoins uh, in escrow for that specific purpose for United Way, for example, and uh, feed the children and so on. We're going to make a list of them. And I'll escrow those Bitcoins. They're going to be safe. Rocks account with a UB key, so they'll be rock solid safe, <laughs> and um, they will be used for that purpose. When the time comes, they'll be you know converted into dollars as necessary, and I'll just uh, give a check personally to those charities from the Bitcoin community, and um, so that's very exciting. And then in the meantime, um, Roger Vera of Memory Dealers has pledged that you know we want to raise ten thousand dollars. He's going to donate the first five thousand dollars right off the bat and uh, basically matching funds, so if, you know, dollar for dollar. So if you donate a dollar, uh, he'll donate, or you donate a Bitcoin, whatever, I guess it's in dollars, we're measuring it. But um, if you donate a dollar, he donates a dollar. So he's going to match that um, up to, uh, you know, to donate $5,000, to bring it up to 10000 right off the bat. And then people are, people are stepping up. And, uh, you know, Tony and Steven over at bit-pay.com have said that they will uh, help these charities that if they're you know uh, an official charity um, according to their tax guidelines whatever then they will give them no charge processing using bit bet dash pay so it's a no-brainer they can just put a little button on their website and you can uh, we'll talk them into it you know we're gonna get these guys to talk to do it there's no reason not to um, because they put a, this widget on there for bit dash pay people can pay in Bitcoin and boom US dollars are de deposited into their account with uh, you know direct deposited into their account the next day so it's really really simple and we're gonna assist them in doing that and we're gonna we're gonna feature many many episodes of the Bitcoin show on a regular basis in the process of setting these charities up and as the largest charities begin to adopt this of course those will be case studies that will um, you know if we get United Way and feed the children hello every charity on the planet's gonna go yeah yeah me too I'll take some money and uh, why not there's absolutely no downside and the beautiful thing about it for every human being is the Bitcoin will be associated with charity and giving which is what it's about I mean the fact that the fact is I'll admit you know I knew about epic change and I was so so moved by what they're doing 
But I, the truth is, I had never donated any money to them. Uh, but when they started accepting Bitcoin, I started making donations via Bitcoin. Why? Because it's just so easy. It's absolutely easy. You don't have to mess with PayPal and credit cards and all that stuff. You just donate Bitcoins. And uh, it's fun to do it. It's instantaneous. And it's real money. And there are no fees. And, you know, I mean, to pay a fee of $1.35 to send a, a nickel to a charity is, is absolutely absurd. It's not even, you know, it's just immoral, really, to give that kind of money to the banking industry when you really intend it to go to the charity. If I donate a nickel to Epic Change, a nickel goes to Epic Change, and it costs me a nickel. And that's the way it should be, whether it's, you know, five pennies, five dollars, five million dollars, whatever it is. So we're really, really excited about that. Um, so I want to take a break really quick and thank our sponsors that obviously without them uh, we wouldn't be here. But I've got a lot more to tell you, so stay tuned. Um, <clears throat> but again, I want to thank Mt. Gox. Mt. Gox obviously is um, the reason we're here <laughs> in Tokyo. One of the main reasons. Mt. Gox is the exchange site, uh, the premier exchange site. They have something like in the about 90% market share. I don't know, it fluctuates, but uh, they're definitely the big, big guys that have been around the longest. Um, they've been through it all and they're here to stay. They're re resilient, they're rock solid, and they're profitable, which is good because that means they're going to be here. <laughs> it's a safe place to do your exchanges. Um, and because they have the best market share right now, um, it, you're going to get the best price uh, when you buy or sell bitcoins for US dollars. However, not just US dollars. We're going to, like I say, we're going to be taping uh, later today. We're going to be making some major announcements uh, about the, the new currencies that they're going to be trading in. So uh, stay tuned for all that. But we thank Mt. Gox uh, for their support. And uh, if it weren't them, for them, we wouldn't be here. So um, definitely send an email to uh, admin at mtgox.com and say thank you. Thank you for sponsoring the Bitcoin Show and Only One TV. And we are very, very grateful to them. And BitPay, bit-pay.com. They call it BitPay, but I always say bit-pay.com because I don't want you to go to the wrong website. BitPay is the most amazing cool tool. Um, we thank them also for sponsoring us, obviously, but they are um, making it so, so easy for anyone to accept Bitcoin, whether you have a simple blog or a simple website. You do not have to be technical. I mean, even I could do it. <laughs> you just go into your WordPress or your you know website or whatever the heck it is. If you know how to paste in a little blob of HTML, you can do this and you can create an item. Uh, or many, many items on your website that are for sale with a shopping cart that accepts Bitcoin. And it's brilliantly easy. It's just an absolute no-brainer. It's easier than setting up an email account, really. And then um, in the end, of course, if you are a, a you know an e-commerce pro and you already have a website and you already have a shopping cart solution, well, of course, BitPay integrates into all the major um, shopping cart solutions and they're in the process of adding more. They're doing massive development very quickly to integrate it into all the major shopping cards. So that's bit-pay.com. Check it out and um, sign up for uh, for their service. And they, um, they for a very small fee, they make it absolutely a no-brainer, super easy to start accepting Bitcoin right away immediately. Um, so we're really, really grateful to BitPay. And not to mention that uh, they're, they're, they've announced that they're going to support us in this uh, promotion of Bitcoin donations to charity. And they're charging you know, zero fees for any uh, charity, so we're, we're very grateful for that and for them as um, great members of the Bitcoin community and of course supporting the Bitcoin show and Only One TV. So thanks BitPay, check them out, they're, they're a brilliant solution. Everyone was very impressed by BitPay at the conference. And Mezzy Grill. Obviously, Mezzy Grill, the world's first restaurant to accept Bitcoin, they're going to go down forever. No, no one else can ever say that they were the world's first restaurant to accept Bitcoin. But that's not the only reason we eat there a couple times a week. It's because their food is amazing. So, um, you know, whenever you're in New York, whether you live in New York, you're passing through New York, be sure to visit Mezzy Grill. They're only three blocks south of Columbus Circle, the very, very famous place called Columbus Circle. It's in the southwest corner of Times Square. And so when you you're going to definitely see time uh, Columbus Circle if you visit New York. Just remember, go three blocks south, and you can visit the world's first restaurant that accepts Bitcoin, Mezzi Grill. They have amazing, authentic Mediterranean food, and uh, it's really, really nice and a comfortable, casual atmosphere, and uh, extremely affordable for Manhattan. It's amazingly affordable for healthy food. But that's not all. Mezzi Grill is now offering franchise opportunities worldwide. So they're kind of like uh, an ups like a 
wrote an upscale uh, chipotle, except it's not Mexican food, it's Mediterranean food, so it's much healthier food, and it's a little bit more upscale than chipotle, but it's sort of that style, so that it's for casual dining, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So if you want to have your own Mezzi Grill, get a load of this. Um, you can start your own Mezzi Grill. Franchise opportunities are available worldwide. So um, just email bitcoin at mezzigrill.com and ask about franchise opportunities there. Um, it's really exciting that they are not only the world's first restaurant to accept bitcoins, they're probably the world's first restaurant to sell bitcoins. You can actually go to Mezzi Grill and buy bitcoins. It's amazing. Um, it's you know in the future of course this will be everyday thing but right now it's amazing they're the world's first restaurant that also sells bitcoins so they charge a six percent fee and it's a thousand dollars per person per day limit but um, check out Mezzi Grill not only for the food but also because they accept Bitcoin also because they sell Bitcoin and also because you can open a Mezzi Grill in your city um, contact them about franchise opportunities and thank them for supporting the Bitcoin show and our entire community and BitBrew, BitBrew.net is the official coffee of Only One TV. And this actually was a true statement even before they became a sponsor. Um, way back when, uh, in the early days, Ed found them. I don't even know how he found them. He's just always Googling things. And he found this uh, BitBrew. And I didn't even know it. He didn't tell me about it. But he ordered uh, several pounds of their coffee. And when it came, he was really happy, which is unusual because Ed is really, really picky. <laughs> if you know him, you know what I mean. He was He's a real finicky fuck, uh, 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 fruit. What am I trying to say? Frugal, <laughs> frugal finicky, and um, hard to please. Anyway, he loves this coffee. He says it's the best uh, ever. So it's the only coffee that he'll drink. He won't buy any from the store anymore. So he, uh, and that was early, right? And then recently, um, BitBrew has, um, be actually they donated a whole bunch of coffee to the conference. If you were at the conference, those little bags of coffee were from BitBrew.net. Let us know what you think. They have all different varieties, uh, just tons of organic and specialty coffees, uh, very, very fresh, you know, made specifically and shipped to you. And they accept Bitcoins, not, I think they accept only Bitcoins, but it's, the prices are definitely denominated in Bitcoins. So um, and they're locked in. So uh, we really thank them for sponsoring the Bitcoin Show as their as our new sponsors. It's bitbrew.net, not bitbrew.com. Bitbrew.net. B-I-T-B-R-E-W.net. So thank them for uh, becoming sponsors of the Bitcoin Show. We really appreciate them. And we're back. So this is what's happening. So we're here. We are in Tokyo, and you know, like I say, you know. That's the uh, Cerulean Tower, as I said before. Uh, that big, tall, slate building. It's one of the most famous office buildings in Tokyo. And uh, we're going to go over there later today. And we're going to do, uh, I have a camera crew, and we're going to uh, tape a whole bunch of stuff and show you exactly what it looks like. Um, and it's, it's, trust me, it's super, super impressive. Um, Mount Gox is super impressive in many, many ways. So um, really exciting stuff happening there. Um, let's see, a couple other quick things I want to update you with. Um, and again, I, I'm sorry that I've been uh, incommunicado and, uh, you know, our, our flaky broadcasting schedule. It's, you know, it's challenging. We're doing so many things. And uh, I'm probably going to stop saying that we're going to shoot shows live every afternoon at 2 p.m. because I don't want to disappoint people that hang out and wait for us to broadcast live. I, I really am hearing you about that. I want to make sure that, you know, we don't disappoint. So. I'm probably going to change it so that we don't have a fixed broadcast schedule that we'll do as many as we can in the most timely way we can and we'll just put them up there as soon as we do. We'll, you know, we'll tweet and broadcast about um, the fact that the shows are there and available as soon as they are instead of focusing on watching live because the most important thing is that we get it done and, and uh, do it, bring you excellent shows and excellent content and that, um, you know, that it's there and <laughs> that it's done because sometimes we can do three, four shows in a day if there's breaking news or if there's lots of things happening. And other times, you know, we might skip a day because there's too much going on. Like the conference, you know, it was really hard to uh, tape during a conference, during a hurricane, during a flight to Tokyo, all kinds of things like that. But we've got lots of surprises coming up in store for you. Uh, we're going to, we are going to do a little bit of more of uh, traveling on the road like this, like we're doing this week in Tokyo. So uh, stay tuned for that. Also, I wanted to tell you, this is, um, this is kind of a news front issue with uh, the that affects all everyone in the Bitcoin community. 
And that is, up until now, um, or, or up until, I guess, recently, in the last month or so, um, the, um, the hardcore Bitcoin community, kind of the focal point of it, of communication, has been the online forums for Bitcoin. But unfortunately, as of a, really a couple months ago, they've just degraded and degraded. And it's not that there's a problem with the people there, it's just a problem with certain um, elements of you know, there's, there's like this group, large group of organized, very well organized, like 13-year-old hackers is really what I call them. Um, just 13-year-olds who have nothing but time on their hands and they just want to, they're anti-Bitcoin. And so they go in and pretend like they're adults and they pretend like they have a viewpoint which they don't even have. They just want to cause trouble and stir up muck, criticize and bash everybody and everything and it's just degraded to a little junior high school you know food fight it's just nastiness and really really ugly so pretty much everybody who's really important in Bitcoin has stopped using the forums sadly um, that's kind of the you know flip side of free speech there's a you know the other side of the coin free speech is a wonderful thing at the same time um, you know it just leaves it wide open to this sort of vandalism so the forums have become just nothing but vandalism it's just like graffiti everywhere basically almost every post is graffiti and uh, causing trouble intentionally so um, you know that's a real it's a real sad day in a way because um, the forum is so important and so it has been so important until now as a way for the community to stay together and to keep informed and so on uh, we can only hope that these children will get bored and move on but in the meantime the way the community has responded is many ways. Um, there are uh, the core key people in Bitcoin Project and all that long ago have you know lost any interest in the forum because of this issue, and so they have created their own private mailing lists. So there are lots of people. And that's what more and more is happening is private mailing lists where you know if you're a real serious adult who wants to discuss Bitcoin um, they'll basically whitelist you and include you in their mailing list so now it's kind of like a hurricane that's spun off into all these instead of one big forum now it's many 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 private mailing lists for different groups developers you know uh, e-commerce people all different kinds of things so I'm on almost all of those mailing lists and um, that's kind of what the forums have spun into there first of all it's just too much volume anyway these are just thousands of messages. You couldn't possibly keep up with them all, even if they are legitimate messages. And that was the first problem that we had. But then now, with this uh, just utter, you know, vandalism, the destruction of of the um, intent of the forum, it's become unusable, and it's really sad. So um, anyway, that's what's happening. Uh, people are creating private mailing lists. We have our own, uh, and it, I invite you to join it. The easiest URL. It's based on Google Groups because Google Groups makes it very, very easy to block these types of people. You can you can only participate if you have a Google account and so you can't just join and create 200 Google accounts for the intention of vandalism. Uh, Google handles that for us so that makes it really easy. And Then every single message that's posted is personally reviewed uh, by me before anyone can see it. So it's super highly moderated so you're gonna get really good quality content. And that's uh, Tiny URL. Uh, I don't know if you want to have time to put it in the lower third, but it's tinyurlcom slash Bitcoin people. So it's just uh, the website is uh, the URL is t i n y u r l dot com slash Bitcoin people. Tinyurlcom Bitcoin people. And I didn't warn uh, those guys in the studio, but if you get a chance, they can uh, update it in the lower third. But either way, it's tinyurlcom slash Bitcoin people, and you can just uh, sign up with your Google account and be on a on a good quality mailing list for. Bitcoin discussion. Um, and so in the meantime, yeah, I, you will probably not see me in the actual uh, Bitcoin.org forums anymore uh, for that reason. And um, also, of, of course, I have to say all of the, uh, you know, I spoke out in the forum against this vandalism saying exactly what I'm saying now, that it's a really sad day for Bitcoin when these anti-Bitcoin, they're basically Bitcoin haters, you know, are completely vandalizing and destroying the forum and of course you know I'm pretty outspoken I spoke out about it and of course because I spoke out about it I am now their target so they're trying to attack me every way they can and so they're spreading all kinds of uh, uh, nonsense about me so all these accusations that you'll read about me obviously 100 percent false so um, that's it um, just wanted to give you an update about that so that's 
that's uh, what I suggest um, as an alternative is private whitelisted mailing lists and uh, other ways. Of course, the Bitcoin show, that's what we're here for. And we want to be a, a centerpiece in the Bitcoin community and bringing you what's important, what's interesting. Um, definitely email, we're, email us at uh, bitcoin at onlyonetv.com and give us your feedback about the show. We're always interested to hear from you know the, the actual Bitcoin community and audience and uh, hear what you want to hear about. Um, what your thoughts are. So uh, we want to always remain uh, a center focal point for the Bitcoin community. That's what we're here for. And uh, let's see. So I guess that's about it. <laughs> that's enough for now. We're going to actually uh, wrap it up here, pack up our tripod and our cameras and stuff, and we're going to go over to uh, the Cerulean Tower and do a bunch of shooting at uh, Mount Gox. So uh, stay tuned. That'll be the next episode of the Bitcoin Show. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Ciao. Thank you.